Hello and welcome to Nick's Allotment Diary. It's been a while since I've given you a plot tour, so here's what my allotment looks like in July. So we've had a lot of hot weather recently. Uh, it has cooled down the last couple of days and we did get a little bit of rain at the beginning of the week and we're due a small amount today. So firstly I'm going to show you the potatoes in the ground. Potato plants in general are looking pretty healthy. These are the um, Sarpo mirrors and the Shetland black I think on this side. And this variety is the Valor potatoes and they're just about finishing now. So they're going to be ready for digging soon. In this bed are the onions. They've now uh, started to flop over so they'll be ready for pulling and drying. Now I don't know if you can see but they're a very decent size. Those are the red onions. These were the onions from heat treated sets. And here are the white onions. So pretty big. Probably the best onions to be fair that I've had before, so I'll definitely be using these again. Um, now we go over to the corn. The corn is producing its uh, flowers now. The uh, tassels, these are the male parts of the corn, and down here are the silks. These are the bits that are going to form the cobs of the corn. So they're looking pretty good. Um, they don't, they haven't minded the dry, warm weather we've been having. Over in this bed, we have uh, mainly sort of leaf crops with a few alliums. So we've got rainbow chard and various lettuces. We've got uh, different mixture of lettuces. And in this bed. I've got the onions that I planted from seed. They've not done very well. They've not liked this bed, I don't think. Mainly um, because of the tree. I think the tree has probably sapped a lot of the nutrients out of the soil here. So I need to feed the onions well. Uh, I'm not too bothered about those, to be honest, because I've got a decent crop of onions in the other bed. Here is the purple mountain spinach. Um, this was seed sent to me from Ryan of A Little Dirt Never Hurt. Cheers mate. Um, starting to flower already. I'm not sure whether that's, that's right or not. You know, I think it's probably because it's been so dry that it's starting to basically go to seed. So I'll be snipping off those seed heads. Otherwise I'll have a purple forest uh, next year and here is the herb bed now the herb bed has done uh, very well it's got a mixture of herbs in there now and uh, all sorts of different ones um, and the bees love the flowers particularly uh, these ones over here strawberry bed um, hasn't done that well this year to be honest I think the hot weather has affected the strawberries did get a few early on but then uh, nothing much more um, I think in general people have struggled with strawberries this year in the heat now I don't know whether you remember this area here has for over a year had a big black composter right in the middle of my plot. I had intended last year to move it. I have now finally moved this into its final position, which is over here. So now I have my, all my composting stuff together. I just need to get um, a door put on the bottom of the front there so I can just load the uh, weeds and composting material in the top. There's basically a lid that comes off that you can take off and uh, feed your composting material in the top and then 
when your compost is rotted down you can use this front part to remove it. Moving over to the flower bed the roses have done really well this year they're um, highly scented a few of those have just gone over now and need to be uh, cut off to encourage more flowers but I've had loads as you can see there's plenty of buds coming for more um, verbena this is starting to flower now the bees and the butterflies love this and of course we have the calendula loads of calendula it self seeds uh, really nice bright flowers again the insects love it encourages pollinators into the allotment here's the other rose that's looking good and this rose here is looking good too moving over to this bed this is the bed that I've now got uh, mainly tomatoes and beans in so these are the crimson crush tomatoes the ones that are blight resistant that I've been growing this year and last year they did really well last year so I decided to use them again uh, produce a decent sized tomato in addition I've purchased a crimson cherry tomato so it's part of the crimson crush family but it's basically a cherry tomato as opposed to a larger tomato so um, it's a grafted plant um, I bought it from Sutton's I think and um, they um, should produce quite a large plant and again they have the advantage of blight resistance which on an allotment if you've got tomatoes outdoors you definitely need now we move over to the climbing French beans these went in very late uh, so they haven't started producing any beans as yet but they're starting to twine around the canes so I would say in about three or four weeks time I'll probably start getting some beans I should imagine I've mainly got cobra French beans but I have also got a couple of plants of the uh, Blue Lake the, they're the two at the end now over to squashes and pumpkins uh, there's a combination of different squashes and pumpkins in here they went in very late I've got a pumpkin there a courgette green courgette there uh, that is a butternut squash called hunter and that is a yellow courgette and then over here I've got some squashes and I don't know whether you can see the name of them I can't pronounce it properly the uh, cheeky curry something like that they're a round sort of orangey red squash now over to sunflowers these are some dwarf sunflowers that I've got but here are the giant sunflower plants so they're about seven feet tall now um, got Titan that one's a Titan then we've got um, American Giant Russian Giant another American Giant and a Titan so plenty of sunflowers I don't know whether you can see at the top there they're just starting to form their flower heads so in the next week or so they should come out into flower talking of sunflowers this is the volunteer sunflower that I grew that I let grow from seed it has flowered just about finished the main flower now has been uh, covered with uh, bees but the good thing about this sunflower is this one might be my one for my multi-headed sunflower as you can see there's a flower head there 
There's another one coming behind there. Another one there. Another one there. Another one there. So plenty of heads coming. So in the competition that I'm running, hashtag Sunflower Challenge 2018, there is a category for the most flowers on one sunflower at the same time, out, out in flower at the same time. Don't know whether these will all flower at the same time or not, but this is going to be my entry, I think, for that category. Over to this bed, finally got the brassicas planted the other day. Um, various different ones in here. I've got some Brussels sprouts, some um, some kale. There's broccoli and savoy cabbage and summer cabbage. So plenty of different cabbages. I've just covered them uh, loosely over with a net for now and I'll properly cover them in a week or so's time. Because it's been so dry I don't have high hopes that there'll be many potatoes in the buckets or there won't be a very big size but I'll tip some out and do a potato reveal and weigh them for you on another video. Just have a quick look at the apple tree one of the apple trees. This one I think is the James Grieve apple. Uh, it's got a few apples on it, not loads. Had a lot of blossom but uh, it's got a few apples. So hopefully I should get a decent uh, few apples out of this that uh, taste good. Into the fruit cage. Got quite a bit of fruit. Um, but it has suffered with the hot weather. It's been difficult to keep watered. So uh, blueberries here. That plant is the best one of them. Produced a few blueberries, but nowhere near as many as last year. Um, red currants here. They're just going over, to be honest. They should have been picked by now. And over here we have black currants. And you can see those. There's various black currants on the bushes and at the back we've got uh, red gooseberries and more red currants over there. have had a big problem this year with bindweed choking everything. Uh, I'm going to have to seriously look at this in the winter I think and see if I can dig out some more of the bindweed roots because it does sort of strangle some of the plants basically grows up them, uses them as a support and uh, flowers. But I have uh, sort of cut back quite a lot of it around the outside of the fruit cage, but I do need to uh, see if I can do something over the winter to try and uh, control it a bit more. Into the greenhouse, finally got the tomatoes in. So they, they're growing um, four different tomato varieties and a cucumber, market mall cucumber in the corner. Uh, I've set up a bit of a watering system which uh, consists of this bin here um, and this is a solar powered pump basically. So it pumps water from inside the bin through this tube in and drips water into each of the halos there. And I can always just top up extra water round the uh, halos if I want to and put extra feed in. I've got four different varieties of tomato. Um, this one is Mountain Magic. This one is Indigo Cherry. That one is the Gigantimo. It's not a very gigantic plant, but it is supposed to produce large fruit. Uh, Sun Gold is the fourth one. And as mentioned, Market More Cucumber. On this side of the greenhouse, I've got various peppers, um, a few other plants that need to go out. Um, 
I've got some more pepper plants at home that need to come up here on the staging. That's what I'm going to do uh, next week. And uh, I'll dedicate the staging then mainly for growing peppers because they did really well in the greenhouse last year. I hope you enjoyed that trip round the allotment. Thanks very much for joining me at Nick's Allotment. I'll see you again next time.